So how many agree that what I'm about to show you is a potential ripoff when it comes to portable power stations like these right here? So these three power stations that you see here all have something in common. And I'd like to propose a solution to what I think is a potential ripoff and hear what your thoughts are. The thing these three power stations have in common is they can each accept expansion batteries. I have the expansion battery for the anchor sitting on top of it. I do not have the expansion battery for the Blue Eddy. I have the expansion battery for the DJI. They work great, they look cool, but in today's world, we need our dollars to stretch further. And so my proposal is, if there's a way to accomplish what we need accomplished with expansion batteries, but give you more bang for your buck and could be used for multiples of purposes, I think that value proposition is much better. Now let me tell you why. A lot of these proprietary expansion batteries are basically just giant paperweights unless they're connected to, you know, the main power station unit. That's the case with this anchor. It only connects and expands this F2000 and nothing else. There's no way to charge this battery on its own. There's no way to pull power out of the battery on its own. And that's global across the board. Now, I do need to give credit where credit's due. I believe the B300K battery for... Blue Eddy has a little bit of functionality uh, built into it uh, that it can kind of stand on its own, but it has limited functionality. Same thing here with the DJI. They do have these SDC ports right here, and you got to use uh, one of them to connect up to your main unit. Uh, but uh, you do have an extra one here for you know a potential accessory you know, such as a solar charger or something like that. So I do need to give credit to uh, some of the manufacturers out there and say that, you know, some of their expansion batteries do allow you to have some function, but it's very limited. And then another big gripe I have is the cost. So I just took some screenshots here and uh, right now is kind of around the Black Friday time. So a lot of things are on sale. So uh, we're even seeing sale prices. Well, let's uh, let's look at this uh, anchor expansion battery. So here it is listing on Amazon. Currently, it's selling for 900 bucks, basically. $899. That gives you an added capacity of 2,048 watt hours, which is double what the main power station unit holds. Let's take a look at one more. Blue Eddy Apex 300. For that, uh, we want to look at uh, the slightly cheaper uh, offering, the B300K. It includes the cable to connect. I presume that the anchor uh, one does too. But uh, anyway, this one is currently selling for $9.99, so just barely under a thousand bucks. This one has more capacity though, 2,764 watt hours. So in terms of watt hours and uh, what your money is buying you, the B300K is actually a better buy than the Anchor. That's beside the point. I want to propose something that's going to blow all of this out of the water. And that would be buying a 51.2 volt, 100 amp hour golf cart battery. Now, anyone who's been part of the channel for a while knows I'm somewhat obsessed over these golf cart batteries, but it's for good reason. Let's just uh, keep building off our cost comparison. Do 1.2 volt nominal, 100 amp hours. That gives us 5,120 watt hours. That's more than double the capacity of that anchor battery right there, and just shy of double of the B300K battery for that. Also more than double that expansion battery right there. So over 5,000 watt hours, selling for $729.99 right now. So right there, this has blown the doors off the pricing on these proprietary batteries, but it gets better. Included in this kit is this monitor right here. This screen is gonna give you a lot more insight. This is going to give you not only your state of charge in 1% increments, but it's also going to tell you your current in amps, your battery voltage, your battery temperature, an estimated time to empty, or if you're charging, an estimated time to full. You might even have a whole separate second page here where you can toggle off the discharge or the charge. You've got max and minimum temperatures. You've got a cycle counter. And then on page three, you get to see every individual cell voltage on this readout. Alpond even has a Bluetooth module built into the battery. So you get all the same information from that smart display right on your phone in a dedicated app. Included in that price still is this right here, a 56.8 volt 18 amp smart charger. It's in an all metal enclosure. It actually has an IP water resistance rating meant to be outside, of course, because it's going to charge your golf cart. But just because it says golf cart doesn't mean you have to use it in the golf cart. This charger is incredibly helpful for a variety of things, not only just charging this, but you can actually also use this as a way to pass through power from say a gas generator, even if it's a dirty power gas generator. It will clean that up, dump it into the battery, and then allow your power station to utilize that power provide clean 
safe power for things you're running. I have a whole video about that that uh, I'll leave a link down in the description too, as well as up in the right corner. So I think just dollars and cents here, you can see that you're getting way more battery and power plus chargers, smart monitoring, the whole nine yards for a much better price. So let's talk about use cases now. I already alluded to this being able to clean up dirty power from gas generators. Let me show you how it connects to your power stations. Okay, option one. If your power station like this Anchor F2000 has a DC input limit of 60 volts or higher, you can see the Blue Eddy has the same thing, then you can simply get a setup like this. Get a properly sized fuse and a little cable like this, minimum 10 gauge. I'll have a link for this one down in the description. It's got uh, two ring terminals on each end and then whatever end is needed to plug into your power station. In this case, it's an XT60i, which will work for XT60 as well. So if we simply plug it in to the power station, then we'll come over here to our trusty screen and enable the discharge on the battery. What you're gonna see happen is this power station will start recognizing power. It doesn't know the difference between DC power that's stored in a battery like this versus solar power. And so as you can see, it's going to start accepting power. And we're gonna give it a few minutes, but you'll see it actually accepts a lot of power. So because this DC input is limited to 20 amps, which you can see right there, it's going to pull in a maximum of a thousand watts from this battery, which is totally awesome. And then again, if you check out uh, my other video exploring setups like this, this allows you to add even more solar to this battery compared to just adding it directly to that power station. So you don't get rid of the option of having solar with this setup. Same thing would happen, we get about a thousand watts input on this Blue Eddy if we went in through the DC side. But I want to show you a different approach that uh, you can consider that I think is actually the ultimate setup if you have one of these portable power stations combined with this golf cart battery. And that solution is something like this. Now, this involves a little bit more of a DIY approach, not very much, but you do need to have your head screwed on just a little bit more. That's the one thing you pay for with the proprietary batteries. It doesn't matter when you plug them in or how you plug them in really it will take care of all the communication and balancing and everything for you with this setup when you first connect this up you do need to have your head screwed on just a little bit and ensure two things one make sure that your power station has a 51.2 volt nominal lithium iron phosphate battery we need the voltage and the chemistry to match exactly with what we've got out here in the external battery two you must make sure that both items are fully charged if this is at a 100% state of charge and this is at a 20% state of charge there's going to be a large imbalance. I were to hook this up the way I've done and uh, connect these two up and this was discharged and this was charged, a huge flow of power is gonna rush out of this battery and try to equalize this battery. That's bad, we don't want tons of power rushing. So to fix that is we just need to make sure that they're both at a 100% state of charge or very, very close to it. So you can see that the Blue Eddy is charged to 100%. You can see that this is recording 99%, but that's because we dumped just a few thousand watts into this power station and it was fully charged up until that point. So we should be okay. And you can see that the voltage on this golf car battery is 53.4 volts. I have not turned this breaker on yet, so if I were to probe the power coming from the Blue Eddy power station, you'll see it's registering 53.5. So we are very, very close in voltage between these two, uh, which is good. By the way, I have another video coming out shortly that's going to go in depth on how to build this wiring harness in particular for Blue Eddy. However, like I said, this works with any power station that can accept an external battery that's the same voltage voltage and chemistry as this. Yes, even EcoFlow, even though people don't think so. I'll have to make a video about that someday. So to make this work, ensure that all your connections are done properly. Ensure that your state of charge is very, very close. Make sure that, that your uh, breaker and disconnect switch here is in the off position. Now I'm gonna come over here and we're going to energize the discharge on battery. And in theory, we should be able to throw this switch and not have anything blow up. One, two, three, do not blow up. Everything's good. You can see that actually a little bit of power is flowing in to the golf cart battery, which isn't a surprise, but just about two amps is all. So now with this uh, giant setup, I've just added this entire capacity to that of this power station. So almost double the capacity of two expansion batteries for significantly less than half the cost of those two expansion batteries. And I'll show you, it works 
beautifully. Got a little space heater running on high heat. You can see it's pulling 1400-ish watts from the power station. But to check out over here, we're actually pulling 14.6 amps from this golf cart battery to power this heater. 14.6 times the voltage of 52.64 at the moment. So 768 watts of the 1400 is actually being supplied by this battery. And then the rest is coming out of the battery built into this uh, Apex 300 unit. This battery will also recharge in parallel with the Blue Eddy battery using its charger. But again, I don't think that's a deal killer because remember this comes with a super nice charger. And in some cases, it's more advantageous to use a charger with this if you have dirty power. The cool thing is you could hook the charger up to this while it's connected to, say, this Blue Eddy. It will actually pass its power through to the power station battery and charge it up. So you can kind of isolate this away from dirty power and not run the risk of damaging it if you so desired. So I let the heat run for a minute and uh, we depleted the power station down to 95%. And uh, this golf cart battery is registering 97%. I've plugged the AC charger in. You can see that. I've actually plugged it into this anchor power station for a minute. You can see we're charging at 1400 watts. And out of that 1400 watts, 11.9 amps charging. You can see that right here going into this all pond golf cart battery. So this setup works both directions, which is pretty sweet. But hang on, there's more because this is the type of external battery that it is. It will work very, very well to expand your portable power stations. But because it's just a basic 48 volt battery, you could hook it directly up, much like I've done here with other golf cart batteries, to a 48 volt inverter all in one unit and utilize the power that way. So now for less than 750 bucks, I have a battery that will fit multiple use cases for me. I can expand my portable power stations on the go on my RV. And then when I'm not using it for that, I could have it parked over here and uh, it will help be part of my whole home power backup solution. So my investment is getting used two times and I spent less to begin with than if I had just bought, you know, one of these proprietary expansion batteries. Let me just do some in-depth quick tests, like a capacity test and recharge test on this battery. Just so you can see its actual performance is I think this has a lot of value. Capacity test for this Alpond golf cart battery. You can see we've fully charged it up to 100% state of charge. And then I've got the, the Victron Spark shunt here hooked up. I have zeroed everything out on that shunt. It's going to start dumping some power into this uh, power station. And on the Smart Shunt app here, you can see that we're basically pulling exactly a 0.2C rate, 20 amps out of the, the battery. So we'll let her rip and I'll be back with the results. You see we're 0% sitting way down at uh, 40 volts. That is very low, but to uh, check out what we pulled, 105 amp hours. So this crushed the capacity test. Okay, we just finished the capacity test on this battery. See we're 0% uh, there on its display. And I've got uh, this kind of set up here so that uh, we can See how long it takes with the charger that uh, came with the kit to charge this battery from 0 to 100%. We'll have the stopwatch going here. We'll see when the light right here goes green. We'll also see if we can see anything on the screen, but it might be a little hard to see uh, with the camera angle. But uh, in any case, we'll be able to see when this goes solid green and see what time it is. Got the charger running. Let's go ahead and start the stopwatch. And the recharge time test is over. According to the time lapse, it took just barely over six hours to go from very dead to 100% fully charged. All right, guys. So that's my proposal on how to make your money stretch further and not get ripped off by these proprietary batteries. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. You guys always have different ideas and perspectives that I'd love to hear. I think probably the biggest pro that I can think of to going with a proprietary battery is what I said slightly earlier in the video. If you just want to have something that you know will work, no matter the state of charge, and just plug it in, away you go. Don't have to worry about voltages and battery chemistries and a little bit of wiring or, or whatever, then for sure or the extra investment for the proprietary battery is the way to go. However, if you're slightly DIY inclined, this isn't a major thing to either build this, which is actually slightly more advanced, I'd say, or just do this very simple single wire, single fuse setup. I think this uh, Alpond golf cart battery has a lot of value. I sure hope you'll show your love to videos like this that I think bring a lot of value, could save you a lot of money, expose your mind to different ideas by doing the five free things like, 
comment, share, subscribe, and hype. YouTube is not a kind place these days for small micro channels like mine. And doing those five things seems to make a tremendous difference in the algorithm and the energy at which it pushes the video out to more eyeballs. So please consider doing that. Also, if you have specific questions, I have a link down in the description where you can submit a question that will be answered within 48 hours. And usually I answer with a private little uh, video to you and uh, I'll go into depth and uh, respond to your questions. And then if you really want to go into depth, you can actually book a live video consultation with me. I'll also have links to all of the stuff that uh, you saw me use in this video. I've always got more great epic stuff coming your way. So stay safe, stay tuned, and we'll catch y'all next time.